Hello everyone, today I would like to welcome you to this clinical presentation of a novel Braxer anterior veneer case. Because of the intrinsic hardness of the zirconia surface, in this episode I would like to talk about my approach to bonding zirconia restorations. This individual is one of our support team members here at the lab. One day he walked into the office to fix our broken curing light and I noticed that his beautiful personality was not a fit for his existing smile. To correct his smile, I opted for one of the industry leading material available today, our very own Braxer anterior. The patient broke number eight in a bike accident. Of course, we could have a composite remedy to correct the tooth, but after discussing the treatment options for restoring the broken tooth, the patient also expressed that he was unhappy with the unattractive white spot on most of his upper teeth. The final decision was to restore his smile with veneers from 4 to 13 to correct the fluorosis spots and some slight misalignments. Patient was not interested in the orthodontic treatment and decided on 10 veneers to improve the aesthetics of his smile. I started my treatment plan with diagnostic cast. Since posterior wear was noted and patient confirmed he is a clincher, the strong material available today for veneers in this situation will be zirconia. Since Braxer anterior is a more translucent material than traditional zirconia, the light transmission of a thin Braxer anterior veneer will enable a great natural look for his smile. To efficiently communicate the information for the diagnostic wax up, I send the technician a pre-up model with markings for the desired changes. I also use photos with drawings and measurements to show future changes I would like to see in the incisal edge position, smile line and tooth alignment. From the diagnostic wax up, a potty matrix is formed into which bisacryl is injected and placed on the teeth to form a mock-up smile. Unfortunately, we have here a darker shade than we originally have planned, but I was still able to use it for my depth cuts and as a tool to communicate tooth alignment, form and length. Patient didn't like the contour of the centrals, he opted for a more natural look, so we asked the lab to make another set of temporary to incorporate the desired changes in the new set. The extent of facial reduction required was pre-planned using the diagnostic cast and the intraoral appearance of patient's teeth, such as shade and position. A tapered depth limiting burr was used for the reduction. The restorative material also played a role in the degree of the reduction and because Braxer anterior can be milled to accommodate a very conservative preparation, I chose a depth limiting burr that provided me with 0.3 to 0.9 mm depth cuts from the gingival margin to the incisal third. After horizontal grooves were marked, the acrylic matrix was removed. We can note that only tooth number 9 will receive an additive restoration, all the rest will have subtractive restorations since they have the most facial reduction. Note how the acrylic mock-up prevented unnecessary entering into the tooth structure and no marks were left on the facial of number 9. Incisal reduction was completed based on the anticipated incisal length to allow for 1 to 1.5 mm incisal thickness. A fine, thin, tapered diamond burr was used to blend in the depth cut and create a smooth surface. A smooth gingival finish line was created to ensure that the tooth veneer transition will provide an optimal gingival health and color. Here is removing the previously placed composite repair we made for the patient as a temporary remedy on tooth number 8. The incisal preparation should have a butt joint at the right angle to the palatal surface of the tooth and should transition smoothly from the incisal to the facial contour of the preparation, avoiding sharp edges. At the second appointment, I plan to refine the preparations and take the final impression. To control the pain and reduce the number of injections and the total volume of anesthetic necessary to anesthetize the area from 4 to 13, here I am using bilateral anterior middle superior alveolar nerve block. I do this with the STA, which is essentially a computer-controlled dental injection. 
It controls the flow rate of the solution, so a gentle hydraulic pressure will develop within the tightly bound palatal tissue. This pressure will enhance the diffusion of the anesthetic through the porous palatal bone. A benefit of the AMSA nerve block is that this injection will not provide labial anesthesia. This is of particular importance in the maxillary aesthetic zone, especially at the trying appointment, because it allows for normal patterns of speech and lip position. To ensure proper placement of the preparation finish line, double zero cord from Ultradent was placed using a double-ended serrated cord packer. To ensure good adaptation of the veneers, here I am using a diamond burr to refine proximal extensions and the preparation finish line. Because of the misalignment on number 9, I place here a matrix band between 8 and 9 to prevent unnecessary reduction of the proximal area. For the posterior teeth, the chamfer preparation was extended apically and on the occlusion, it was wrapped over the palatal incline of the buccal cusp, keeping the finish line away from the occlusal contact. Using grip strips will get rid of any debris that may be present at the proximal area. Veneer cases can be very complex to design and as much as I would like to think that my preparations are what makes beautiful veneers, in the whole actuality is the hands of my talented technician that ensure a great result. And there is no great result without an accurate impression. I always achieve predictable result with the dual cord technique. Here you see me placing the second cord as two continuous pieces. A size 1 cord will sufficiently displace the tissue in horizontal direction. The extent of gingival displacement after the cord removal will allow the impression material to register details beyond the preparation finish line, and so the technician will have a clear understanding on how to blend the Bruxelles anterior restoration into the existing tooth contour. I think the steps to success in taking predictable impressions on a multi-unit case is to first achieve adequate retraction with control bleeding, then use an impression material that capture every detail of the preparation. Here I used medium and heavy body capture system. And lastly, use a non-flexing impression custom tray. Following the impression, a new set of Biotemp CAD provisionals were seated. They were fabricated directly from a diagnostic digital wax app that had incorporated the changes we made at the previous appointment. Patient liked these stamps and we decided on a trial period of three weeks to see how he will respond to function and aesthetics before committing to the final restorations. Here is the seating appointment. In this segment, I will show you my approach on bonding zirconia veneer restorations. We know that acid etching enamel or ceramic surfaces increases the surface area and improves bonding strength. Even with conservative veneer preps that preserve most of the enamel to allow for a good bond, the question remains, how can we treat the intaglio surface of a Broxer anterior veneer to achieve the same results as we would with ceramics? We know zirconia is highly resistant to chemical attack from hydrofluoric acid, so we must use a different method. If I chose to bond Broxer anterior veneers using resin-based adhesive and looting cements, such as Multilink, Atomix, or Variolink, I will need to use a different approach. A method that has shown to be quite effective in our office in increasing bond strength to zirconia is the technique of silica coating followed by IvoClean and then silane application. After cleaning the preps, we were ready to try in the veneers using translucent try-in cement. Lastly, we checked the margins fit and get patient's approval. For the pretreatment of the veneers, my assistant is using here 30 micron silica coated alumina particles from a media jar that's connected to the chair side air abrasion nozzle and sprays the sand against the surface. This is known as tribochemistry treatment. The difference between micro etching and tribochemistry is that when a ceramic surface is micro etched, that is commonly referred to as sandblasting by spraying aluminum oxide particles and in this process the sand particles get embedded into the target surface. 
However, with triple chemistry treatment, because of the intrinsic hardness of the zirconia surface, the silica-coated particles is thought to bounce off the surface, but before doing so, there is an actual transference of silica from the particles to the target surface. When the mechanical collision of the silica-coated alumina from the coated sand hits the intaglio of the zirconia veneer, it is the local energy of impact and the high temperature generated that melt the silica glass onto the surface. Some studies have demonstrated good results in enhancing adhesion of resin cements to zirconia with this treatment. Then the veneers are rinsed and ivoclin is scrubbed in for 20 seconds and rinsed well with water spray to remove the contaminant. On the freshly cleaned and dry surface, silane monobond plus is applied and allowed to react for 60 seconds. Silane chemically bonds to glass, which is silica, and also to the lutein composite, particularly the varioling and multiling, creating an adhesive bond. Before treatment of the preps, I like to provide isolation for two preps at a time, using metal bands or mylar strips. I do this before etching the surface with 37% phosphoric acid for 20 seconds. After rinsing off the etchant with the water syringe, I will scrub in two coats of G5, one minute for each coat. This will not adversely affect the bond strength, but will provide antibacterial effect and prevent bacterial growth between the tooth and the veneer interface. To simplify my work process, I applied Addis Universal using the Viva pen. I like this pen because with every click I get fresh material dispensed into a low film thickness that will ensure an accurate fitting of the veneers. If I need, I can also thin out the film using an ADEC oil-free air dryer. Note that I did not cure the bonding agent. To ensure proper fitting, my personal preference is to cure both the bonding agent and the looting agent at the same time. I can do this because Broxer anterior is a translucent material. I seated the restoration with light finger pressure and maintained the pressure with wooden sticks while using the tack and wave technique. Waving the light for two to three seconds allows the excess cement to be peeled off very easily with an explorer. Variolink looting composite was chosen for cementation and because this cement is subject to oxygen inhibition, liquid strip was applied to all margins and cure thoroughly. Before proceeding to the next step, I used interproximal strips and floss to ensure all excess cement was removed. After all restorations were in place, the occlusion was verified in protrusion and lateral extrusions and adjusted were required using fine diamond and polished with brownie polishing cups. Also, phonetics were checked to ensure there will be no interferences for the F and S sound, confirming the restorations are in an ideal position. To provide better protection at the margins interface, a layer of fluoride varnish, fluoride protector, was applied as a long-term caries prophylaxis. To further provide protection of the restorations, a Comfort Hard Soft Night Guard appliance was chosen. To offer ideal fit and comfort, the patient was instructed to bite down gently on an arch articulating paper. Occlusion marks were evaluated and adjustments were made to obtain an occlusal stop for each of the opposing teeth. Broxer Anterior utilizes a high-grade, new blended zirconia. The zirconia has an increased level of yttria, which gives it excellent aesthetic fidelity in the mouth. It is simply the perfect material for anterior cases that require a high level of aesthetics. We know there is more to be explored and further studies are needed to confirm the effects of this technique on the bond strength of resin looting agents to pretreated zirconia surfaces. I hope I provided some insights into my bonding to zirconia protocol. Rebuilding a smile with veneers may be one of the most difficult procedures to perform. In this case, Broxer anterior material provided a wonderful service for the patient's clinching pattern 
and in the end, a significant impact on the patient's self-esteem was achieved with 10 Broxer anterior veneers. Thank you again for watching.